Well, hello there, sailors. Welcome back. Today, as you probably were able to tell by the title, we are talking about what I think is the best part of Avengers Endgame. Now, Avengers Endgame is a huge film with a lot going on in it, but for me, the best moment is this moment right here, where the character of Harley Keener from Iron Man 3 makes a brief, yet extremely important, appearance. Freeze! Don't move. You got me. Now, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic when I say that Harley Keener is the best part of Endgame because Endgame is full of huge, mind-blowing moments which are obviously better than a solitary kid who most people didn't recognize standing in a line with a bunch of other people, not really doing a whole lot. But what I do mean by this is that the fact that he's there is emblematic of the entire reason why I personally loved Endgame so much and why some people probably did not like it as much. So I remember months before Endgame came out, the announcement that Ty Simpkins, Simmons, Sim, by the way, I'll put his real name here, would be reprising his role as Harley from Iron Man 3. I was really excited about this because it was like the last thing I would ever expect to happen in this movie. Um, and it really lent, for me at least, like some credence to them saying stuff like, this will be the most epic film ever. It's gonna be the culmination of everything. Everybody's in it. I was like, yeah, right. But you can have Harley Keener in it. And they were like, boom, here's Harley Keener. And I was like, all right, I guess Harley Keener's in it. That's pretty cool. I kept my peepers peep for him the entire movie. I was expecting him to maybe show up as like Tony's protege again, help him out, get some sort of small Iron Man suit, do something quirky that, you know, would be kind of cool. But instead, he is just right here in this moment, which for me, this shot, Iron Man's funeral, is the best part of Endgame. Now, the reason I say this is because some more backstory. I remember before this film came out, it was Sebastian Stan or somebody who was in one of these movies was giving an interview and they said there was a scene which took them months to schedule so that they could shoot it. And they looked around and just everywhere there were there were like 32, 32 superheroes there, okay? So I remember assuming that it was gonna be for some big crazy epic battle. And watching the movie, I was like, oh, it's it's this right here, this epic fight. But turns out it, that was not it. It's this very quiet moment here at Iron Man's funeral, which is my favorite part of the film. And again, compared to moments like Cap lifting Thor's hammer and Tony's snap and so many other things in the film, it definitely would not seem like something that would be the best scene in the movie. But for me, it was because this is a scene that for all intents and purposes, should not be in the movie. It's like two minutes long. It's one single long tracking shot. Nothing happens in it. It's extremely difficult to schedule, as we know, really difficult to film, and it just doesn't really like add anything to the movie other than being Tony's effective funeral. I, this is a three hour movie. This is a three hour studio movie made by Disney, made to make the most money it possibly could. This is the highest grossing film of all time. If you have a movie of this length, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to show it as often in as many screens, so naturally something this often gets cut down a lot. You see this all the time with long movies like Watchmen. They don't end up making as money because you can't have as many show times with them. So naturally, these films often get butchered on the cutting room floor. And it seems like this, which usually sadly have to go, which is the fact that it's in the movie at all because of that is one of the reasons that I love it so much. The other reason I love it is simply because of what it says. This is one long shot. There are no effects besides like Hulk. Nothing crazy happens. Nobody says a single word. The camera and the music are the only things that carry the scene. The actors are simply standing there in a straight line. And yet everything about it is so methodical and perfect. The first time I saw it, I knew that that was my favorite part of the movie. Sorry everyone, my, my cat is, she, she croaks like a frog. Anyway, this is a scene that has every important face in the MCU in it. It has Captain America 2, Harley Keener. Someone like Harley Keener is not a recognizable face in the MCU to most people. Obviously, it's important to have people to funeral like Pepper Potts, like Happy Hogan, like Iron Man's daughter, like Captain Marvel, all these recognizable faces. A little bit angry I'm not gonna lie people didn't recognize him it was of course an unbased anger but it made me feel a little bit better about myself it made me feel like a real prestigious fan unlike the disgusting dirge that pile on top of these movies once they got super popular anyways I'm just gloating now the way I look at it Harley's appearance in the scene 
represents everything that I like about this scene. Here you have a character that most audience members would not recognize, and the ones who did recognize it would not care to see him. He's someone who doesn't really add anything to the overall narrative. He's someone that doesn't need to be there at all. This is an actor that they went out of their way though to reach out to, contact, pay, bring back, schedule, makeup, wardrobe, put in the scene with all these A-list stars. And they didn't have to do that. Yet to me, the fact that they did speaks so many volumes about this movie and about the love and care that the Russos put into kind of, I don't want to say wrap up, I guess whenever you term, but capping off this world. Will we ever see Harley Keener again? Probably not. Um, there's a really small chance, but I didn't think we'd ever see him again at all, and we did. But the fact that he's there, he doesn't have to ever show up again. Just him being there, from a character perspective, it had so much to him because he went out of his way to be there for Iron Man again. He was there with all these other people who were close to Tony. In some ways, he has a better relationship with Tony than a lot of other characters here at the funeral, like Janet Van Dyne, for instance, like Captain Marvel, Marvel though she did save his life. Like a lot of a lot of people, he's just this kid who looked up to Tony and he's there, and it represents so much of what Iron Man did for this universe. And his presence there speaks as a testament to that. And it boggles my noggin that he's there, and yet I love it so much. Now this brings me on to a next point, which is the fact that I saw this film with a lot of people, one of which was my girlfriend's sister, and after the film she said something to the effect of it felt like it was fan made because it was so full of fan service. And I was like, um, you're right. And it's perfect. And the, the fact that this film is clearly made for fans is to me why I love it so much. A, because I'm a fan, obviously, but also because so rarely do you see a franchise like this that treats its fans and its universe with so much love and respect to go so above and beyond. And I'm not just talking about like revisiting um, Asgard from Thor the Dark World or going to the setting of the Avengers in 2012 or all these other things. I'm talking about the little things like bringing back Red Skull, bringing back the Ancient One, bringing back Harley freaking Keener. Those are the things I'm talking about. The only other franchise that I've seen this with is the final Harry Potter film, The Death of the House Part 2, where you have all these actors and characters who hadn't appeared in the films for years, who were brought back for this final one for seconds just because the fans wanted to see them. Moments like that are what has shaped me, I think, as a fan, giving me expectations when it comes to these big franchises, particularly in, for, in finales. The fact that something like The Death of the House or Endgame will go to such lengths to incorporate as many small details as they can for the sake of the world and for the fans, is it, 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 it's, it, it warms my heart. Does this necessarily equate to good filmmaking or writing? No, not necessarily. It's fan service, yeah, but I think that fan service oftentimes gets a really bad reputation because fan service does not automatically mean bad, lazy, pandering, or annoying. In the case of Harley Keener, it's anything but lazy, pandering, or annoying. It's all the opposites. It's not for your casual, disgusting, normie pleb fan with shoving popcorn into their mouth and guzzling soda like a disgusting barbarian. No, this is for the people that have been there through the thick and the thin. Iron Man 3 was not really a popular movie. It made money, yeah, but nobody particularly likes that. I mean, I do and other people do, but it's one of the less popular MCU movies for a lot of reasons. And for them, again, to bring back arguably one of the least popular parts of that movie and put him in what is supposed to be like their love child, basically Endgame. Some people, I can understand why they think it's kind of like a slap to the face, but to me, it is an act of love and admiration, not just for me, a fan, but for the universe as a whole. So my point boils down to is this, that when you look at something like the DC Cinematic Universe, it doesn't, first of all, it doesn't have the wealth of characters that the MCU has, so there's no way that it could, you know, do something like this, but it also never would because it doesn't feel like these characters are treated with any kind of love or reverence. And that's speaking of the big characters, let alone the minor characters like Harley. The point is, is that when you can do something like this, when you can honor your fans in a small and endearing way, do it. The presence of a character like Harley, for me, elevates the scene to something like, the scene is unexpected, but as it stands, it's expected. But to have someone like Harley there is the most unexpected thing you could do in an expected manner, which is already unexpected. Okay, so, I think I've rambled about Harley Keener enough. Um, all I, this was a very scattered video. I apologize. If you liked it though, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, 
give it a freaking thumbs down because it was trash. I didn't write a script for this. I tried to just kind of go and raw, if you know what I'm saying. Just sort of, uh, just sort of guessing, making up as I went. Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time, sailors. Yeehaw.